have to involve and how AI is uh, helping to fight coronavirus. So uh, I'm just giving you a few uh, five pointers like thing and uh, after that I will go in detail that uh, how I have used uh, NI techniques to uh, look into that uh, how coronavirus could be handled. And much more, uh, I will say that uh, how I can do the data analysis with the uh, help of ANI. And uh, after that, we will uh, go through the prediction part also. So let's start. Uh, first of all, we are, uh, how ANI is involved is uh, like we can build uh, COVID-19 dashboards in Python. And one of the example has been here through a YouTube example. They, they, they have shown that uh, in uh, America, uh, how the coronavirus is spreading across the uh, across the different states. Uh, so even though I have created a few dashboards and uh, uh, I will present it today. So that would be interesting, and uh, uh, we can see that um, how uh, exploratory analysis has been uh, uh, advanced in Python, so that uh, even minute details could be visible to. Uh, any lame guy can understand that uh, uh, how coronavirus has spread across the countries of the world. The second part is that we can look for prediction part, like uh, new cases are there now currently in China. Suppose 70, um, the new cases is coming out to be 35, 30, uh, 37, 40 like that. But in America, it is around 30,000. So we know about few days here, but what would be the what would be the future about it? What would the future? What would be the in future the recovery rate would be there? In future, what would the death rate would be there? So all those things, uh, uh, we know that AI is known for prediction part. So this would be one of the goal of AI to understand how new cases is coming out to be, how recovery would be there, where the peak is coming to, the peak is going to come. Everybody is talking about that also. And after that, when the coronavirus could be over from the world. So all those predictions part, NI is looking into it. Also, not one day understanding that uh, uh, what it is and when it when the things would be over or when the things would be. But what is the baseline cause of uh, coronavirus? So analyzing the reasons behind it the what would the major reason that uh, uh, it is uh, still rising in us it has fallen in uh, uh, china why it has not spread so much in um, singapore or in south korea so all those things we could look into that also if measures like lockdown like in india there is lockdown is going on so if it is effective or not how much it is effective And if weather is an important factor, then what kind of like the temperature is really the important measure or not, which is working with coronavirus. So all these things are a part and parcel of uh, AI involvement with the uh, coronavirus. Um, I, I started uh, my notebook with uh, the small introduction about the coronavirus, uh, which is a uh, you know. Uh, contagious respiratory virus which has started in Wuhan and uh, it has spread uh, now all over the world and uh, the World Health uh, WHO has given the name on 2nd November it says COVID-19 and uh, so already a uh, little bit of things already we have seen into the quiz like symptoms fever tiredness dry cough other symptoms include uh, what are the preventive measures are there so wash your hands and uh, maintaining one meter distance so these all things we have already seen into that i'm directly uh, because already a lot of time has been spent on uh, the technical issues so i'm just jumping on to the technical parts um i have got the data uh, which is capped from uh, uh, this link uh, after at the end of the call maybe i will uh, share the link uh, to the to you guys you can look into it and uh, and start working on that. But uh, nowadays, uh, earlier, uh, uh, I have made two kind of analysis. First analysis is uh, up to uh, 
uh, 20th of March till that the data has come and that data is re uh, really good. But after that, nowadays, whatever the data is coming out to be, uh, it has a lot of, lot of uh, errors are there. It may be because uh, the data flow has increased and uh, I will, I will, I will teach you that uh, what are the different kind of uh, problems is coming out in, in, into the data. That would, would be also a good uh, study about it. So there are a lot of uh, software applications are there, which are used in data science. But why we are using Python? Why not uh, other things? So a brief understanding about it. First of all. I can say that uh, while I'm working in Jupyter and uh, working in a uh, uh, Python, the codes are much more readable because of uh, the indentations, because of uh, uh, the clarity of a uh, code. You have to uh, the code you have to you have to make you have to write a code in such a way that it should be simplified manners and the syntax of uh, uh, the rules the syntax rules which is uh, of Python makes it much more uh, readable. The other part is that it uh, supports the object-oriented and structured programming, which helps us in creating a lot of functions, a lot of classes. And uh, with the help of these classes and functions, we have not to write uh, the multiple times the same thing. So uh, these things are not absent in R, I can say. The functions is there, classes is not there, and also the libraries are there. So, some things are there, something is not there, but Python is much more a standard, uh, stra standard programming languages, which uh, is not only used in data science, but also in the web scripting also. If we talk about the, the platforms, it, uh, 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 it is present in a uh, you know, lot of, uh, uh, be it Spark, PySpark is there, uh, if you're talking about Scala, so, uh, uh, if you're talking about uh, the Jupyter, uh, it's in Jupyter format. And if you if you want to make uh, the Python's, uh, if you want to run in a uh, Microsoft Azure Cloud platform, it is available. If it wants to run in the uh, Google AI platforms, it is present. Everyone understand that uh, uh, nowadays, uh, if you have a, uh, if you are working in data science, you need Python. So. Now, data science in Python earlier, which was a, a little bit uh, disconnect, now it becomes a pure connect. It's not, it's, it has been possible because of uh, a lot of libraries, especially after coming off pandas and numpy, it becomes much more, uh, it, it becomes much more inhabitant uh, that people who are working in data science are using uh, uh, Python. If you talk about efficiency also and handling a, a huge amount of data also, uh, a lot of languages is facing that issue, but Python is not facing as compared to them. So, and when we're talking about uh, the open source framework, uh, Python is, everyone knows about that, uh, Python is open uh, source, uh, uh, not like SaaS, like uh, we have to pay a lot of money. So when the, uh, the startups and everyone is using Python, like I am I'm going to freely use the Python, the same way that uh, any professionals are using. So. This is also giving us a much more uh, uh, advancement. The software development part is also a pretty good, like in Python and AI, especially the, a lot of APIs that has been created. Uh, we all know about uh, the new um, algorithms like uh, LightGBM, like in this uh, tutorial also I've used LightGBM. So LightGBM, XGBoost, all the new, all the current uh, uh, algorithms which are introduced uh, in, uh, into the uh, data science. Uh, everyone, every algorithm has been uh, deployed in uh, Python, and uh, we are using that those APIs to uh, write uh, the codes. And when I'm uh, uh, when I'm talking about uh, uh, creating the softwares with the help of Python, the lot of softwares are based on a uh, uh, Python uh, prototype. So. Because it is very easy to uh, uh, write the test uh, testing part and the uh, application part is not so tough. So people are much more uh, relying on Python for that. So these are the basic pointers why people are much more relying on Python. And uh, when, we, uh, when you start using the Python for uh, some period of time, you also get familiar and uh, you also like, start liking it. Uh, uh, the, sim the simplicity uh, is uh, that that uh, the codes are not so much uh, 
uh, hard and fast to understand. If you know any uh, any data science language, the Python has been made to make you understand the same uh, uh, on the same platforms. Like uh, suppose you know about data uh, frames, so Python is also created uh, pandas, and in pandas there is a data frames. So similar kind of structures and everything has been provided in the, this language. Oh. Hopefully, a uh, lot of you guys who are attending this uh, webinar is currently using uh, Python as a uh, <coughs> to go or data science uh, uh, to solve the uh, data science problems. If you are not, uh, you can use it. You can learn it, and it's not so hard to learn it. Also, especially in, uh, in IMS, uh, it has been a lot of courses are there, especially oriented to the Python, and a uh, lot of good teachers are there, which are. Making you understand the uh, of courses uh, and course structures and uh, the Python uh, subject much more easy. Okay, so a lot about Python, um, much more about the Corona. Now, um, now we will dive into the codes and uh, we will look into that that um, uh, how um, with the simpler codes only uh, we can handle. Uh, the coronavirus, the big, the big data of coronavirus, and uh, how it is going to. Uh, the look wise, also, it's not so bad. It's uh, uh, it is going to make you feel uh, that uh, okay, a uh, lot of uh, interactive uh, uh, dashboards we can create with the help of Python. Okay. So before jumping into that, um, I have uh, extensively. Uh, I have uh, used. Uh, uh, Few things uh, like I want to talk. Uh, I want to talk to you. I want to go. Let you go through that. Okay. Who are new? This must understand. These are the very basic ones: pandas, numpy, and also matplotlib. See, but these are very basic things. Uh, we always uh, uh, have these things. Uh, um, whenever we start any any kind of uh, data analysis work, we start with pandas, numpy, matplotlib, seaborn. But for advanced visualizations nowadays, Plotly and especially Plotly Express has given an, a huge edge in this uh, uh, exploratory analysis uh, station of coronavirus. Also, I have used Plotly Express like anything, and Plotly has given us a feature like um, a, uh, like a, uh, Plotly graphs. And totally offline means through offline also we can up download lot of a notebook plot and I plot so that we can directly keep it into into the things. Um, one problem with Plotly is that uh, when you are using the Plotly, sometimes what will happen that uh, images will not come, and you start thinking that why it hasn't come. Uh, in that case, is the, the best thing is that you have to restart your kernel, and uh, it happens a lot of times with me that um, uh, I've created totally graphs, everything I imported that in HTML, and I, I see that in HTML I'm not getting any graph, any map. Then I wondered why it has happened. Then I uh, understand that okay, uh, because we have to restart the kernel and uh, again the totally start working on that. It's a little, little bit heavy, um, heavier API, and that's why it is. Sometimes it happens like that, that you start uh, non responding. Apart from that, uh, 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 for the uh, for basic uh, prediction part, I'm using the skill learn and uh, line GPM. Uh, I will go through the two parts. Uh, first part that uh, till the uh, 20th of March, where uh, I have uh, scrapped the data from uh, the site that I've already quoted. I kept it in my directory. And from there, I created uh, the data frames and uh, I've started uh, uh, creating the plots and everything. In the second part, what will happen? In the second part, uh, uh, In the second part, uh, uh, we will start with uh, uh, the uh, new current data sets because, but I will tell you also that uh, there are a lot of problems with the current data sets, and I don't have so much time to work on that because I have other works also. So that would be a task for you to understand the data and uh, to come out the, with uh, some of the 
um, graphs and uh, the predictions that I had done with uh, uh, the smaller data sets. So, few things before jumping into that. Um, I've got the three, th three uh, data sets. Uh, first uh, data set is uh, about uh, the confirmed cases. The uh, second data data frame is uh, talking about the uh, dates, and third data set is about the recovery. How it does look like? Obviously, I, you want to understand. It looks like this. Uh, yeah, the country region is there. So different countries are there. It, it, every country is uh, maybe uh, some of the countries we have directly data. No states and provinces is uh, <laughs> has been added. Like Thailand is no provinces state we have added. So only uh, no NAN values coming out to be. But suppose uh, US is there or, or uh, China is there, so there are a lot of provinces are there. It's a big country. And we want to understand uh, the confirmed dates and uh, uh, recovered cases uh, of coronavirus in the province-wise also. So that has also been provided. Along with that, latitude, longitude is also been provided. And for each date, what so this is the um, confirmed cases so the how the confirmed cases keep on increasing so it's uh, on 20, on in thailand on 20, uh, 22nd jan two cases are uh, was present 20, 23rd third uh, 24th fifth five and it's it keep on increasing like that so this is just uh, that uh, how much confirmed cases keep on coming like that And uh, the sanity of data uh, still, uh, I'm saying that questionable because uh, sometimes what happens that uh, the data of it which we take, uh, sometimes it's not so correct or sometimes it, uh, we have to look into the different aspects that uh, if it is correct or not based on our knowledge of uh, data science and uh, also the knowledge of domain. That sanity checks uh, how you can do how you can go through that sanity checks uh, uh, in the next uh, notebook i will uh, explain not in detail but in uh, obviously some some part of that oh, okay um here again i have uh, uh, tried uh, using the mailed function uh, everyone uh, i think that some of you know about mailed function because it's applicable both in r and python both what what will happen that since uh, it's it's in the since the data set in this format that um, on each state wise we need the data uh, as a time series data so what will happen that in time series data we, that date should be here and uh, we need the data points in that that format in this format so what will happen that um, the date will come in this uh, uh, date will be also one of the column and uh, with the confirmed and date and recovered section would come out to be here so uh, build function generally is being used for that, that it is going to convert that form. It's just like a fiber, fiber kind of fiber. Okay, uh, now uh, I have created this full table thing. I will come to the check part later on. Okay, then one more uh, section that I want to be, uh, I'm much more interested is not only the confirmed death and recovered, active also. Active is nothing but uh, we take the confirmed cases minus death and minus recovered. So obviously, what are the confirmed cases are there? If you uh, subtract both the death and recovered cases, you will get the, what are the active cases. Also, the mainline China is a uh, much more they're using mainland China and China. So uh, I've just re replaced the mainland China with the China. Sometimes the province states are, most, most of the time it is NA. So I'm just, uh, uh, don't want to see any NA, NA most of the time. So I've just replaced with the space. Also, what I've done that sometimes what happened that, uh, if the active case is less than zero, I'm going to drop those cases because I don't need those cases where uh, the active case is less than zero. It might happen because of data sanity thing. The uh, confirmed death is, uh, um, means death and recovery is more than the confirmed cases because uh, they are having uh, the wrong data. So what will happen that uh, the active case becomes more than 
less than zero. So I don't want uh, to incorporate all those data. So, so to bring that sanity check, um, I have just removed all the tables which have the active value, which is less than zero. Obviously, it should not be less than zero. It should be more than zero. Also, equal to zero also will be work, but it should not be less than zero. So it's just like a sanity check that I have created here. Okay, um, some of the things are not provinces, like uh, you know that diamond print, uh, diamond ship, uh, MS Zamda. So a few of the ships crews are there, which are also fallen in, uh, into the trap of uh, um, coronavirus, and uh, like grand princes, like uh, uh, crews. Uh, so all those all those part we should not uh, uh, consider as a uh, country or region. So I've put it in the form of ship. Since uh, initially we can have seen that China is having a huge rise of uh, coronavirus cases and the rest of the world doesn't have anything. Now China doesn't have so much rise in the coronavirus, but the rest of the world has a immense. So I just want to understand that what's the difference between that. And I've taken just like a simple thing. If full table country is equal to China, then it's soon as China. If full table, uh, full table is not equal to China, then it's the rest of the world. So this is the... Uh, one of the more uh, data frame that I've created that I might use in uh, uh, creating the exploratory analysis. And uh, this is uh, one of the things that, uh, uh, which is the latest data file. So uh, what is the latest condition? So in my cases, uh, I have a max full date is uh, 20th March. I told you like 20th March, uh, what is the status? And that would be taken into place. So that will come into the latest part. Uh, uh, there's not so, so much time that I will go at detail of each and a uh, small part of the code, but uh, because uh, because of the time part, already lost a lot. Uh, I will little bit uh, quickly go through the uh, code. If you have any questions later on, uh, I can go through that and uh, I can give you an uh, answer for that. So now, uh, um, like the uh, most important part is that like uh, uh, what are the confirmed cases, what are the dates, what are the recovery, and what are the active cases. And we know that uh, uh, that should be present when the max date uh, on to on 20th March. These are the numbers that was prominent, and this is all around the world. No. Uh, I've make, made a uh, use of simple uh, totally express and try to create a tree map. And here we can see that what are the active cases, uh, what are the recovered cases, and what are the deaths. So obviously, this is all always a case when uh, we have see we can see in current status also the active cases is pretty high and uh, the recovered and deaths are pretty much low. So on 20th March, we have created a, a table structure with a colored uh, frame where we can see that, uh, which is giving you a picture that uh, uh, in China on, uh, on 20th March, uh, confirmed cases was pretty much high at that case, at that point of time. US was pretty much below at that point of time also, but it has taken over uh, soon. And uh, now cases, you also know that it is a very staggering numbers out there. So with the help of this uh, uh, simple uh, template graph, uh, with uh, uh, um, you know uh, simple uh, graphs, we, uh, with the help of this, uh, we can create a graph. Uh, it is inbuilt, and uh, I don't ha I don't need anything. It's in the pandas itself. It's so pandas only. Uh, you can do it. So you have not to need a lot of uh, other things. Just you have to need CMAP rates. And through the which through which uh, um, you can get the colored graph like that. It will highlight to the high numbers. It will uh, it will become uh, very dim for the low numbers. Here, uh, what's the difference between these two is that uh, here I have sorted it with the uh, confirmed cases. We have more, more more the confirmed cases the I have sorted it, and here the next time I have, con I have much more look I have much more look for the active cases. Because on 20th March, also the active cases in Italy was pretty much high. 
but they can recover. And you can see that uh, now Italy has also controlled. Now US is facing the 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 most active cases in the world. Now, folium is uh, uh, one of the uh, um, uh, again one more uh, supporting like a, uh, like a partly a uh, folium is also one of the tool with the help of which uh, we can get uh, the world maps in a very good good manner. So I've used the folium dot map, and you can see this map has been created. So what will happen if you increase? If you can you can zoom in. And you can look into the uh, specific cases like Spain. What are the confirmed cases is there? Uh, suppose uh, you want to look for France. France confirmed cases. What are the dates? What are the recovery rate? Uh, if you want to look for uh, Andorra, want to look for United Kingdom, want to look for uh, Netherlands where I'm currently. Germany. So it's a it's one of the uh, uh, nice tool with the help of which uh, we can look uh, look into details about uh, the you know through graphical representations we can uh, highlight the things and uh, the the circles are highlighting that it's a uh, it's the area of uh, huge numbers now uh, especially the in China Hubei region you know that Wuhan come under the, this province you buy. the confirmed reason confirmed cases is around uh, uh, 67800 so uh, and it is so much and also you can see quickly also the uh, confirmed cases are so much at that point of time so this is one of the through graphs also we can see that uh, around the world through map uh, we can visit and uh, we can find out the or what are the confirmed cases and like that. The folium is one of the good tool with the help of which we can create that. Now, um, Plotly has a global plot with the help of which uh, we can create a, a world map and uh, start, it will give you, uh, uh, you know, colors based on the severity. So, like in China, like suppose Spain. Uh, the it is high severity. The, the U.S. still has gone through, but Mexico has very low cases, so it is giving the dark. When in India, it's a very low confirmed cases, like 244, so it is giving the very low numbers like that. Uh, all over the world, uh, where, wherever you want, like uh, some people are telling, and uh, news is there that uh, uh, there is no cases in uh, Africa like that, but it's it's completely. Uh, no news because they are also having facing the problems like that. For although the majority of problems are unreported, and uh, but still they have reported also a uh, lot of coronavirus cases like that. Australia currently is low, but uh, nowadays also Australia is also facing a lot a high number of confirmed cases. So that is one part that uh, I have used uh, uh, for colored part. Now I have changed the colored uh, continuous scale. Add some set, and with the help of which I have shown you the death rate. Now, death across the world, and you can see the death at that time it was pretty much low. In US also was 2244, but China was facing a huge. India was having just a five days at that point of time, and the, the almost most of the Africa part there is no death at that at, at, at that time on 20th March. Nothing was reported. Now, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, Plotly, um, X, um, Plotly Express has also given us a, an opportunity to um, go through a timeline access and uh, we can look into the timeline way that uh, how it has spread, so how confirmed cases have spread from the small point to the, the bigger point. So when we go through that, uh, it is just giving you a play a symbol like that. Let me just try it. And we can see that it has started. Now in China, it has just started, and in all the remaining world, it has just, uh, it is pretty much low, in low sip. 
but but we can see that now in Italy it started booming and it's booming like anything. It's getting bigger and bigger in Italy, Spain, and now European countries especially is facing the thing. But China it has been almost like constant. So this is one of the graph with the help of uh, which uh, uh, this uh, timeline axis give you uh, one way that uh, give you with a, a date uh, if you provide a date and if you provide the uh, the data that uh, how it is going to spread across the world. So this will give you a very good uh, uh, very good uh, exposure analysis that uh, how it is going to spread. Hope you liked it. Similarly, in the death case also, like if you, uh, if, I, if I will just run, like death is going to be pretty much high in China because the others have not reported so much. South Korea was also reported that time. Now, later, now in the later part of the time, the European countries, especially Italy, and started reporting a lot. And after that, uh, US, Brazil, and everywhere, but uh, after that, the uh, death rate becomes pretty much high in uh, uh, Europe. And China has become constant at that point of time. This is also the recovery rate. So uh, uh, we can obviously see that China now, this time, not become constant, but becomes a pretty much uh, dominant phase. Like recovery has started, and we can see that South Korea, uh, very early, the recovery rate has started. And now it has gone bigger because the numbers of China in China was big, not in South Korea. So South Korea already controlled it. But since uh, um, because of lockout and uh, other things, uh, uh, the, you can see that other are not growing so much as uh, the China has grown. Also, uh, we could look for the active cases also. So uh, this will give you an idea that uh, uh, in China might be the cases it has grown up, but some point of time it has gone down also. So that is uh, one of the classical example. Like you can see that active is pretty much high in the China now. Now it has gone down, gone down, gone down. Now it started coming down, and uh, the other world part is keep on increasing, but it started. It has taken a peak and it's going down and down like that another case in other world everyone is increasing like that so active case is one of the good example to look into that now um that was pretty much uh, fasc uh, fascinating and uh, uh, with the help of time and you keep on uh, uh, seeing the cases but uh, here, uh, directly uh, with the help of simple bar charts across the different across the timeline, we can look into that. That uh, what are the confirmed cases of the timeline and uh, how it is going to be. Like um, obviously, the lot of countries are there, and that's why the very small small graphs are coming out to be. So we are not showing uh, for everyone, but especially for China, which is much more dominant. We can see that it has increased up to some point. But around 5, 14, 5, 6, 15, 5, 16, it becomes constant. And now after that, it remains constant. But we can see the cases of Italy. Italy has started as small, but now it has gone big, big and not. It, it, it was exponentially rising at that point of time. So this is a, a good graph with the help of which, uh, suppose uh, here we have different nations. Suppose you have other variables also, we can. Uh, think of a different variables and uh, we can plot it across. So it is just like a cross-sectional graph. Uh, we can also call as a panel data where um, the two dimensions has been decided. One dimension is about time series. Other dimension is about uh, the uh, cross-section. Your cross-section is country. The country has been taken into one point. So the different countries have been shown with the different lesions and uh, across different timeline with the, and what are the data points? These are the data points of confirmed cases. Similarly, you can see 
the confirmed case is fine but death rate is pretty pretty much high in italy and it's still it's we can see that death is still very much high in italy and spain and now the france is leading so the thing is like that that the, the china because it has adopted a lockdown pretty much earlier so it has controlled the coronavirus to a significant amount but the european who are a little bit late in that still are facing the same issue india has taken a strong step and um, that's why the spread of in india is also pretty much low we can still find that the, the numbers are pretty much uh, moderate as compared to european nations and recovery obviously you can see that uh, uh, other country doesn't stand in front of china it has taken a huge task it becomes exemplary um, um it becomes a, china becomes an example that uh, how you can handle the this kind of uh, epidemic and uh, it has recovered a pretty fast so fast that now lockdown has been over and people still are thinking of lockdown and uh, the china is thinking to come out come out of the lockdown and active cases active cases give you much more a clear signal active cases will show you that although in china on 5 14 on 5 15 5 16 these are the peak points and after that active cases has come down again i will remind you that active cases is uh, active cases is uh, whatever the confirmed cases minus the recovered and minus death cases so either they have recovered but the, the we have seen that china death rate is pretty much low so they have recovery rate was become pretty much high that i have seen in the last graph and because of that the china has recovered pretty much fast other nations the active cases keep on increasing and it has not taken a uh, till uh, obviously till 20th of march it has not taken but the last graph that i saw in the ppt the italy has started now uh, has reached a peak and also it has also Uh, the the active cases has started falling so we all are looking for that only that when the peak will come and when the active cases keeps on coming down so that uh, uh, we would look for a uh, uh, time when uh, uh, look for a time when uh, uh, the corona virus will go away so those peak cases is really, really important for us okay uh, This is one of the graph where uh, I try to I try to uh, work on the uh, mortality part and the recovery rate part. So what will happen that uh, suppose uh, what are the total number of death out out of total confirmed cases? So out of hundred confirmed cases, how many total uh, uh, death rates are coming out? It's just like a mortality rate we are comparing. also out of uh, confirmed cases what is the recovery rate so this is known as recovery rate and mortality rate over the time and uh, how it's coming out to be so you can see the graph uh, earlier the recovery rate was pretty much low because uh, we don't have any medicines we are pretty much unaware about this thing and it's mainly this uh, recovery rate is high in all over the world because of the china which is keep on increasing increasing and after that again after 8th march the recovery rate is gone up because it has taken a peak and after that it is still going going down mortality rate although it was uh, pretty much higher there so it's going down but uh, since uh, after 8th 16th feb uh, when in china it has stopped other worlds has has started facing the same challenge and because of that the uh, rate keep on increasing and increasing and increasing and still it's increasing and um, uh, if you see the current graph it becomes much more it is telling much more that mortality has become much much more than that so uh, i uh, when i have started uh, i have told you that uh, i have taken the two data frames First data frame is about the China, and the other data frames are taken for the rest of the world. So because of this, because I want to compare the uh, 
कंफर्म केसेस रिकवर्ड केसेस एंड डेथ ऑफ चाइना विद रेस्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सो यू कैन सी द रिकवरी रेट इज स्टिल प्रिटी मच लो द डेथ रेट इज प्रिटी मच लो आल्सो बट कंफर्म केसेस हैव टेकन एक्सपोनेंशियल राइज एंड इन चाइना इट हैज गॉन डाउन गॉन अप एंड इट हैज बिकम स्टैग्नेंट what about the active cases active cases will tell you much more better figure so here we can see that in china it has gone up on up and around 16th uh, around 16th feb it has taken a peak and after that it started declining like this because we have very good recovery rate on the day side is pretty much low, constant um the confirmed cases become constant the death rate become constant but recovery rate was so high that the active cases had gone down to uh, to a significant level and if we talk about the uh, uh, rest of the world since uh, the confirmed cases was so much is exponentially rising the death rate and the recovery rate was almost uh, doesn't have any picture so this thing the active case is solely guided by the confirmed cases so it, it it gives you a lot of idea about it now uh suppose uh we have found out that uh, uh you know in uh, from china and uh, outside china what are the confirmed cases just a uh, 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 intermix of graph so it is it will look like this like uh, what are the confirmed cases coming out to be and uh, what are the daily cases how many how much are daily cases coming out to be and daily cases you can see that it's almost going down but in um, rest of the world it started peaking every day the uh, new cases is coming out to be pretty much in high numbers and death also and because of that recovery also the recovery is pretty much high in china and uh, since uh, china has already controlled so it has gone down in rest of the world has to focus it so they are having this kind of a uh, crop now almost uh, 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 we are at the end of uh, the exploratory analysis uh, let on we go to the prediction part here uh it is just like a uh floating bar chart which is created with again with the help of a uh uh plotly takes a plotly bar and this bar will help us in finding out that how the things is going up and down so um this is uh, one of the this is one of the uh, timeline this is a play board we start and we can see that in hubei and other pro, pro chain rules that keep Separate. You can see that other provinces also not facing so much challenges as Hubei is facing, and it's increasing like that. But after that, it has stopped, and almost a recovery rate has taken a, a toll in China. And now, rest of the world started facing the things after that. Now it is picking up so much, so fast, like uh, China is nowhere now, and rest of the world is taking the chart like that. this is one of the graph uh, this is not so good but i've just uh, drawn it just to find like uh, each day like it's just like a uh, cal map gives you a calendar map like every, every day what is happening what is going on what what's happening so just uh, it's giving you the idea that uh, 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 how much confirmed cases is coming out to be so here we can see that around 16 february the thing is Uh, all uh, because of China, it is going to be dark. But all rest of the world is still facing like that, is having a low number. But after that, rest of the world is having very high numbers, and it becomes dark and dark. Now it is going to be pretty much dark. That's because China doesn't have anything, but rest of the world has pretty high numbers in this phase. the last part is not uh, by me uh, i have taken uh, from uh, uh, floris data visualization so i have just uh, shown you that uh, how they have done it uh, they have used their own data just one second i'm just going to stop it for the yeah 
and uh, I'm going to start it. Sorry, this one. So it is. So China has they started with the China. China is pretty much high in there. It's in Thailand and Japan was there at some point of time. Japan, but Japan. Then cruise ship, in cruise ship, diamond cruise ship, uh, uh, we have seen that the cases were pretty much high in numbers. On 19th and 20th, and after that, South Korea is also facing the same challenges, pretty much high in number. You can see that confirmed cases keep on increasing like that, and now Italy is taking care. No, Italy is, so, uh, it's, it's, it was pretty uh, naive at that point of Italy has just started, but uh, you can see now that Italy and US has just taken over. And Spain and France, everyone is taking over the China, and China is taking important China. Now, if we talk about the prediction part, we we'll start with the prediction part. Okay, so now uh, we'll start with the prediction part. In prediction part, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, what we can analyze, what we can predict. So obvious the uh, straightforward answer comes that uh, uh, it's a time series challenge. Like in time series, uh, the data, uh, like confirmed cases, uh, cases and recovered cases keep on increasing like that. So one straightforward thing comes in uh, in uh, uh, everyone's mind that why not we uh, we, we can pick up pick it up that uh, tomorrow or day after tomorrow or after after that what would be the death cases, what would be the recovered cases, what would be the active cases, what would be the uh, confirmed cases, and can we know about, can machine learning predict about it? Is machine learning helpful in, in that? So I started uh, predictions about it and uh, the, after uh, I, have, I have gone through uh, uh, one of the machine learning lang uh, machine learning algorithm, which is a uh, light GBM. I've used the light GBM to predict the things. But uh, it may be a challenge for all of you guys to go with uh, some other uh, some other uh, algorithms. You can go with the Arima, you go with the uh, XGPost, you can go with the uh, different time series uh, algorithms. Uh, even now uh, in uh, Python, uh, there's a uh, one of the uh, APIs called AP Profit. Uh, nowadays, uh, for time series, uh, AP Profit is used as a, a one of the important tools to predict uh, time series uh, predict problems. So time series problems, uh, you can you can try, you can test it, AP Profit. So now, um, even for prediction, also uh, uh, the thing is that uh, uh, I started uh, for, uh, with, with the, some basic. Uh, Plotting it and looking into that, that uh, if we are having uh, some of the uh, entities intact, like uh, um, here Italy and Spain. I'm just looking at Italy and Spain. What are the numbers? What are the confirmed case numbers? And you can I can see that Italy case is pretty going up and Spain is case is, uh, is going up to uh, this number. But uh, data point of view, if I will see from 24th March till uh, till 30th. Uh, so from 24th uh, um, of actually it's 24th of Feb until uh, uh, 20th March. So uh, I have very almost a month data, not nothing more than that. For China, I have a lot of good numbers, but uh, for other nations, especially India, European nations, I don't have so much data because initially they have started with the 24th of uh, 24th of Feb and uh, later on. So the data point was issued at that point of time. Maybe it is not an issue right now because uh, you have uh, two months of data now. And the predictions come out to be much better than that. Here yeah, the China, and after after seeing into that, I've uh, seen the China. So you can see from China, I have a lot of data from, I have almost uh, Feb, uh, Jan, Feb, and March. The only data is also. Uh, we can look 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 into that. Uh, what are the predictions is coming out with the help of that, with the help of machine learning? Uh, be, before uh, directly jumping into machine learning, uh, I thought that uh, why don't we go with uh, two tests like um, auto correlations and uh, partial auto correlations? Uh, why the major thing is uh, uh, when we go with the auto correlation, it will give you an idea. 
that uh, uh, how much uh, the past uh, data is correlated among themselves and uh, especially with the uh, I, I have taken the china because i have not taken all the data points but uh, i have taken the hubei province because uh, it started with hubei and uh, i have enough data points so uh, my hypothesis can be uh, much more validated because i have the uh, you know uh, i have the uh, much um, much better data set give you the better numbers or the valid numbers so i started with hubei uh, so i have taken the hubei as a province and i have plotted out a correlation and you can see that it is uh, having a, a series series of slopes so it means that uh, it it shows you that uh, data are or uh, the data are auto correlated means uh, uh, the past data gives you the idea of the uh, future data but uh, which data is really important uh, so that give that uh, that data that uh, point has been provided by the partial auto correlation if you see partial auto correlation the first lag is uh, very much important uh after that uh, the other lags are not so much important so while creating the feature engineering so i have written also auto correlation provides a hint of indirect relationship which is not useful but partial auto correlation indicate that the day before is an in very important feature so we will set our one and we will look into that and how the things is coming out of it that i have set again shift one shift one shift one uh when i started creating the uh, lag features Also, um, I've, talk, uh, I've taken the uh, um, few uh, few other things. I have to take like the rolling mean. So one week rolling mean, I've taken uh, and standard deviations uh, also I've taken for the one week. So these are the three. These are the um, so for uh, so obviously when I'm going to uh, predict about confirmed cases, I have uh, uh, three features ready: confirmed lag. Confirmed rolling mean and confirmed uh, rolling standard deviation. Okay. So this is uh, so after that uh, uh, I have created a uh, I've created my uh, data frame like this. So I have uh, a recovery uh, lag values, uh, confirmed lag values, uh, and uh, rolling mean, rolling standard deviations of uh, all this part, and uh, other things, other variables are there. Okay, now I'm going to. Uh, uh create a functions which with the help of which i'm going to run the lgbm and uh, i will create uh, i will take some of the features like um, so the uh, why i am talking about lgbm uh, the reason is that behind it is that uh, uh, if you provide uh, the continuous data set uh, it is going to characterize very well if you, the data point is actually pretty much low but if the data set could be pretty much high then lgbm is uh, one of the fastest uh, uh gradient boosting uh, algorithms among uh, XGBoost, boost uh, cat boost uh, or other boosting algorithms so and uh accuracy part also uh, the light gbm has shown uh, uh, exceptional results uh, uh, you can go through our uh, different um, uh, analytics with their competitions or uh tackle competitions or uh, any uh Hacker art competitions. There are a lot of competitions, analytic competitions, and you can see that uh, Light GBM is performing really well. And uh, I've tried, uh, I've, I have tried it uh, earlier also with a different uh, time series uh, forecasting, and uh, I've seen that in time series forecasting, it is giving a very exceptional result. Uh, if your features are good enough, then um, Light GBM surely is going to give you an edge over. Uh, are uh, uh, similar like moving average or models like uh, basic models 
uh, the light gear is, is doing much better job and uh, so i have taken the light gpm as a uh, as my one of the tool but you can you are free to use uh, the other uh, uh, tools and uh, uh, just to give me also uh, one of the updates that uh, how your how how much success you are getting in that so so year month day state country so all all things are so what will happen that they will uh, uh, these all values are categorized and uh, they are put into the features and uh, already the the lag values are already put it as a feature so when i'm talking about the uh, uh, hyperparameters these are the different hyperparameters that i have said uh in one important thing is that uh, whenever you, uh, you're going through a uh, light gpm you have to um, we have to you have to uh, uh, especially mention that what is the categorical features so here like state country year month day all are my categorical features so i have just to mention that these all are categorical features uh, so they will not make a categories out of that but uh, since uh, uh, recovery uh, lag values uh, uh, recovery rolling mean recovery rolling standard deviation these are continuous data sets what will happen that uh, they will try, try to create a uh, try to convert that into continuous data into categories data and after that the trees will function so much smoother than uh, that's why it is passed also and giving much accurate results also so in this way i'm just going to return the uh, uh, you know the prediction values and uh, Obviously, I'm going to use a train tester split here. Uh, train tester split would not be simply a scale and train tester split because uh, uh, it's a time series data. So, what will happen in time series data? We divide it uh, with a uh, uh, in our time series zones. So like the latest data we are going to predict and the past data we are going to. So, there's, it just, there's, there's not any randomness in splitting. The, the past data we will take it as a, our. Uh, uh, training data sets and the uh, current data sets we will use is as a uh, test data sets and validation data sets. So, uh, we are, I'm going to train it with uh, 24327 data sets with 15 data points, and also uh, when I'm uh, since uh, we we want to understand about all the three things confirmed cases also death cases also and recovery cases also so i have put all the things as a targets i run the subject as a target so target becomes confirmed cases run lgpm data and target so target will be confirmed cases so remaining other all the values are would be becomes uh, the uh, uh, independent variables and my confirmed cases becomes the target variables Similarly for the death cases and recovered cases. So by this, uh, I'm running the three times. Uh, so that's the function. That's a that's the use of functions. Uh, just by writing one function, I'm running the three times the uh, um, LGBA model, and uh, I'm getting the three kind of three type of models. One model one for confirmed cases, one model for death cases, and other model for recovered cases. So uh, I've uh, so these all after that uh, I've just taken an India and I've seen that uh, what is a recovery plot. So I, you can see that uh, um, for the remaining uh, from 14th March to 20th March, uh, this is the uh, test uh, test data sets, uh, and you can see that uh, my prediction is not so bad. Uh, recovery actual and recovered data is almost is going to match here. Death cases is also not so bad. We're talking confirmed cases also a little bit, but still it's uh, taking a, a spike. And this is the case of Hubei recovery cases of Brazil. Brazil has a very means, uh, uh, low number, so with our numbers uh, is uh, coming out to be in zero zero. So it's you can see that uh, if you take it uh, in the form of uh, Integer forms at zero, zero, 
and it's one it's uh, two it's two it's two it's three so it's almost it's means our recovery for brazil is also matching here uh, uh for china what is the state uh, uh, for china different state and what is the recovered and what is the actual uh, values so we can see that uh, the values are coming out to be a little bit uh, staggered form is there but uh, but uh, like in mongolia you can see that 73 cases is uh, recovered and um, which is predicted and 74 is there 75 is the uh, for ninxia and screen to give 76 18 and 17 10 and 9, almost 10 so most of the most of the cases it's giving a good result not so bad not so so uh, these are the uh, things uh, that uh, the whole session is all about. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, this session is all about uh, the past data set. Uh, actually, um, briefly, I will go through one part, small part is that um, I have uh, used for the current cases also. But uh, I've faced some of the issues with the current data set. Like um, these are the URLs that uh, uh, is giving you a data set of uh, current time series. Like uh, no, no, not every time you have to download it from the website, that there is a direct uh, URLs are there. Just you have to uh, use the W and uh, GET as a uh, API and you can download it. And from there, you can directly create a uh, CSV files. You can see um, till 8th of April, uh, I have got the data. But you can see uh, NAN values is so high for the recovery cases. So you know, whatever the recovered data has been provided to us is going to be a pretty much staggered and the wrong data. Also, if I if I see that uh, if is any cases are there or not, so I can see that a lot of any cases are there in all the countries. So almost 184 uh, provinces are facing the problem. But I have when I see the date cases uh, from 4th April, 5th April, 6th, 7th, and 8th April, these are the uh, uh, dates where the uh, you know uh, any cases are there. So what I have done, I have dropped the dates which is greater than uh greater than equal to the uh, 5th of uh, april but still when you go through that what what i have taken a uh, one more uh, sanity check that i have taken confirmed cases So, uh, if uh, the recovery cases are always a question mark is that for the recovery cases, and here I can see that confirmed cases should be greater than recovery cases, right? Because uh, confirmed is the actual one and recovery is, so it should always be uh, lower in that mark. But here, confirmed cases is zero and uh, recovery cases will be 28. So, a lot of uh, mismatch is coming out to be when I've checked to the data points. Uh, and uh, again, I'll try to uh, come out with the issues and um, I've stopped it. Uh, I've thought that uh, directly can, can we look into the graphs and uh, uh, is, that, is that giving us uh, good data points or not? So here, like, uh, the data is not giving uh, about US the clear cut case itself. Like latest in latest uh, uh, the in US is not coming. So the might be they have lost some data and that's why the, uh, the US is, US data has has been little bit uh, more or somewhere else. When I've taken for the uh, latest also here again this uh, facing this kind of problem. That's why I have stopped that point of time and I thought that uh, we have to cleanse the data much more. Like I've shown you one of the glimpses that. Uh, 
how your data is little bit polluted, which we need to little bit cleanse it, and after that you can use it.